Hello everyone, in this playlist we're going to talk about gases and in the first video of this playlist we're going to talk about one of the most important properties of gases and that is the pressure of a gas. So on the right here is a picture of somebody taking the pressure of their tires of their automobile, their tire pressure. On the left hand side here is my uh, cylinder of sulfur hexafluoride gas that is uh, buckled safely uh, against one of the seats of my car. And you may not be able to see it very well, but there's a little regulator over there that tells me the pressure of the gas inside that cylinder. So what is pressure? What does pressure come from? Well, the pressure of a gas originates from collisions, collisions between gas particles and the inner walls of their container. So basically, remember, in gaseous state of matter, what you have are a bunch of particles that are relatively far apart from one another, and they're moving in all different directions, and, and every now and then they're going to slam into each other. They're also going to slam into the inner walls of their container. So the pressure of a gas results from all of those collisions between the gas particles and the inner surface of whatever container uh, in which that gas is contained. So if we wanted to define the pressure uh, of a gas mathematically, well, the pressure is going to be equivalent to uh, the amount of force that those gas particles are exerting uh, divided by the area in which they, the gas particles are exerting that force. So pressure equals force over area, or more neatly, we would say P equals F over A, where F is force, and A equals area. So in the next couple of slides, we're going to talk about some of the most common units of pressure, and there are quite a few of them. So let's go ahead and get started. One of the most common units of pressure is millimeters of mercury, or MMHG. And the millimeter of mercury is a unit of pressure uh, that originates from uh, how pressure measurements are made using a barometer. So let's keep that in mind, because we're definitely going to revisit the barometer in a later video. Uh, millimeters of mercury also go by another name, and those are called uh, Tor, and that's named after the guy who invented the barometer. That was uh, Evangelista Torricelli. So millimeter of mercury, Tor, those are both the same thing. Therefore, one millimeter of mercury is equal to exactly one Tor. Another common unit of pressure is the atmosphere with the symbol ATM, and the atmosphere is the average atmospheric pressure at sea level. So believe it or not, the gases that are in the atmosphere, so all of the uh, nitrogen, the oxygen, the argon, the CO2, that mixture of gases that composes our air is exerting a pressure on us right now. Now, we, we, we may not be aware of atmospheric pressure because it has always been around us, but nevertheless, there is an atmospheric pressure. And atmospheric pressure is what uh, meteorologists use to predict when it's going to rain. And if we wanted to convert between atmospheres and millimeters of mercury, we would use this relationship down here. For every one atmosphere, you have 760 millimeters of mercury. So this relationship can be used to convert back and forth between millimeters of mercury and atmospheres. Let's look at some more units of pressure. Another unit of pressure is the Pascal. Now the Pascal is actually the SI unit uh, for pressure, that international system of units. The Pascal is the unit of pressure that belongs to that group. And uh, so it's exactly equal to one Newton, which is the SI unit for force, over one square meter, which is the SI unit for area. So that's how the Pascal is defined. And Another very common unit of pressure is inches of mercury. So instead of millimeters of mercury, now we're talking about inches of mercury. And the relationship between atmospheres and inches of mercury is one atmosphere is equal to 29.92 uh, inches of mercury. One atmosphere, 29.92 inches of mercury. And finally, the last unit of pressure that I'm going to talk about is pounds per square inch. Uh, otherwise known as PSI. This is the most uh, common unit, at least here in America, uh, that we use for tire pressure. And if we wanted to convert between atmospheres and PSI, we would use this relationship. One atmosphere equals 14.7 uh, pounds per square inch. So to sum all of this up, I got a nice little table for you where we have each unit of pressure, we have the corresponding symbols, and then we also have the average air pressure at sea level uh, in all of these different units. So the average air pressure at sea level is exactly 760 torr. That's also equivalent to one atmosphere. Uh, that happens to also be equivalent to 101.325, excuse me, 101,325 pascals. 
uh, which is equal to 29.92 inches of mercury. And finally, that is also equal to 14.7 pounds per square inch. So all of these units are just units of pressure. The force that gas particles are exerting on the area that is the inside of their containers. So in the next couple of slides, we're gonna uh, go through a couple of problems where we just simply convert uh, between some of these units of pressure. So the first problem says to convert 1,350 torr to atmospheres. So if we go back to our table here, we can find the relationship between torr and atmospheres. Notice for every one atmosphere, we're going to have 760 torr. So we're going to go ahead and write that relationship down. 760 torr equals one atmosphere. And then we can just set up a simple uh, conversion type problem where we start with our 1,350 torr. Uh, our conversion factor is going to have torr on the bottom. It's going to have atmospheres on top. One atmosphere to 760 torr. Uh, the torr units are going to cancel out. So it's 1350 divided by 760 taken to three significant figures is going to be 1.78 atmospheres. Which is pretty easy. Let's move on to one that's a little bit more challenging, but nevertheless not too hard. Uh, next one what we're going to do is we're going to convert 29.81 pounds per square inch to kilopascals. So we're not talking about pascals, we're talking about kilopascals. So it looks like we can accomplish this conversion in two steps. So if we go back to our table here, our table says that, let's see, we want, uh, let's start with the relationship between pascals and um, pascals and uh, pounds per square inch. So we have 101 point, or excuse me, I keep saying 101 point. 101,325 pascals are equal to 14.7 PSI. So we have that relationship. 14.7 PSI equals 101,325 pascals. And then we can simply use uh, the relationship uh, between pascals and kilopascals, which is that 100, or excuse me, 1,000 pascals are gonna be equivalent to one kilopascal because the uh, prefix kilo means 1,000 of something. So again, starting with our 29.81 PSI, we're going, to we're going to convert that first into pascals using this relationship up top here where we have 14.7 uh, PSI on the bottom and then we have 101,325 pascals on top. Then we set up a, a second conversion factor in which we convert from pascals to kilopascals. We're going to put our 1,000 pascals on the bottom and one kilopascal on top, let's just double check one more time to see that our units cancel out. PSI cancel, and it looks like pascals are also going to cancel. So it's 29.81 times 101,325 uh, divided by 14.7 divided by 1,000. Uh, we're gonna take this to four significant figures and that's gonna become 205.5 kilopascals. So that is how you sort of convert between some of the various units of pressure. Uh, I hope this video helped you out a little bit and helped you understand pressure just a little bit more than you did before. And that is it. So have a good one.